first we will just look at arm swinging. Say you are standing in one place and you are swinging your arms. What exactly is happening in that situation? Okay, so let us look at that. So, you have a person standing straight and swinging his or her arms at a constant frequency. Let us say this distance the center of mass of the person is located at a distance h below the line joining the shoulders. Let us say d is the half the distance between the shoulders and let us say the length of the arm this is not uh, depicted very correctly, but okay, let us assume that the arm is stand you know vertical. Okay, I am not taking this inclination into account. Let us say the arm is vertical and its length is L. So, L is the length of the upper limb. So, in the sagittal plane this is theta, I can look at it as I have this arm being swung the other way, it is called that minus theta, okay. counterclockwise plus theta, clockwise minus theta. Let us say the center of mass of the arm, okay. the mass of the arm is lumped <coughs> at its center of mass at a distance. L by 2. Okay. So, for one arm, okay, so for arm 1, I can write R 1, the location of the center of mass of that arm as if this is the origin at the center of mass of the whole body then I can write it as, so let us call this um, I j and k coming out of the plane of the paper. Okay, so, I have R 1 equal to, can you locate it? H along j okay, plus d along i, okay, then minus L by 2 cos <coughs> theta along j minus L by 2 sin theta along k. If I look at this so, here this is j if I am looking at it from the side this is k that is the location of this one r 1. Similarly, for arm 2 I have R 2 equal to H along J minus D along I the other arm okay, minus L by 2 <coughs> cos theta along J minus L by 2 sorry plus L by 2 
sin theta along k because now it is minus theta cos of minus theta <coughs> is still cos theta, but sin of minus theta becomes plus sin theta. So, I differentiate I can get V 1 is H D they do not change ok only the theta L by 2 sin theta along j minus L by 2 cos theta into V 2 L by 2 is d r 2 by d t. So, L by 2 sin theta into theta dot along j plus L by 2 cos theta into theta dot along k. So, now I can look at the angular momentum because of these moving masses okay, of the arms. So, I can say H naught equal to sigma of I have two lumped masses. So, I equal to 1 comma 2 r cross m a m a v i. So, we have lumped the masses at the center of mass. <coughs> Sign of minus theta. Yeah, but the L by 2 is in the positive here. Right? Sorry? But, but theta is being measured this way, I am measuring, I am using the same. Theta is negative. Yeah. So, sin theta will be minus. But let us see, this is along k is like this. It's positive k. Yeah. So, it is positive k, no, overall it is positive k. Oh no, it is negative, right? There is only one minus, sin theta becomes minus. Uh, okay, let us see, i j k sin theta this is <coughs> I am looking at it like this and k is going out if that was positive see this is this is theta so this is L by 2. I mean, R1 we took minus L by 2 because it was going in a negative k direction. Because theta is positive also. Yeah. yeah. Here it is going in the positive k direction. So, L by 2 is naturally positive and theta is minus theta. So, it should be minus L by 2 sin theta. No, no, I am using the same. See, the theta value I am using this positive value, whatever is this one. Okay, and I'm calling. So I could call it theta one and theta two. <coughs> okay, so if I call it theta one and theta, but, but I would have to measure both in the counterclockwise direction for me to say it is positive. Okay, so let's say that this is this theta value is positive. Okay, so, for this arm, for this arm L by 2 is in the negative direction. For this arm L by 2 is in the sorry uh, the k is in the positive k direction, where I am taking theta as this positive value theta. 
if I did this as L by 2 sin say theta 2, okay. but theta 2 would have to be measured positive counterclockwise. Okay. So, I would get say 360 minus that acute angle 360 or 180 or 360. Okay. So, let us see this, 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 my, my, I am going this way, this way, this way, right. R. So, if I look at this, this is L by 2 theta 2 cos theta 2 plus L by 2 but if the theta is this theta, let me look at um, this theta 2 and this is theta 1. Okay. Then I have to take that as I have to take this as minus L by 2 cos theta 2 minus L by 2 sin theta 2. I am measuring everything from this. So, now this is cos theta 2 is, so theta 2 is 360 minus theta, fine, theta 2 is, theta 2 is, yeah, it is always from this, it is it's from this, I am measuring from this, positive in the counterclockwise direction. If I, if I look at okay if i look at the vectors i have this vector plus this vector plus this vector i'm going in this direction with that vector okay so the vector itself is going in the negative j direction yeah that is why this is minus l by 2 cos theta yeah, yeah that is fine yeah the sine component is along the k positive k direction okay theta 2 is positive that is as it is because we are the 360, 360 minus theta is minus theta, minus sin theta. Minus sin theta. Um, but again, in this case also, I am going in the negative j direction. Uh, that sin component is for the k part. K part. Okay. Okay. So here, um, see, if you look at this figure, right? This is correct. This is along the positive k direction. If I take theta as an acute angle. Okay. Measured positive counterclockwise from here. It is correct. I am just trying to convince him how that see here also I am taking minus L cos I have to take minus L by 2 minus L by 2 sin of theta 2 because that is what it is for a positive. If I take the angle positive from this axis I have to take minus L by 2 minus so, for theta 2 also, right, when, when you do your projections, right. So, if this is my angle, I am measuring another angle, does not matter what that angle is, if that is the way I am measuring it, if this is L by 2 from this point, okay. So, this let, let us say in a different coordinate system, this is my positive x axis and this is this angle, okay. So, I have this along this, this along that, those are my projections. So, in this case, this direction is the minus j direction, this direction is the minus k direction. So, here I would have minus L by 2 cos theta 2 along j minus L by 2 sin theta 2 along k. Same, you use this as this is how I am measuring theta the projections are this and this right for this vector this and this so this is along minus k now theta 2 is minus theta 
okay, theta 2 is minus theta. So, this becomes minus L by 2 cos of minus theta minus L by 2 sin of minus theta. It is see look at look at this I am I am measuring I have this as my positive direction ok. I have this vector v and I am measuring theta this way ok. So, the projections are v cos theta v sin theta along here I have taken this direction as the minus j direction ok. So, here it is plus L by 2 along the minus j direction minus L by 2 along the minus k direction that is the projection when I measure theta in this manner ok. Now, theta 2 is nothing but so this ends up being minus L by 2 cos theta along j and minus uh, plus L so plus L by 2 along minus k. See that this is the projection if this is the vector v Why is it minus k? because that is in my in this so coordinate so system. For arm, right? So, for the first second arm also now I am taking theta 2 measured the same way from here yeah. all the way to there. So, I do not care about the value of theta 2 when I am doing these projections these this is minus j that is minus k theta 2 now happens to be minus theta. So, I get minus L by 2 cos theta and plus L by 2 sin theta that convincing enough now ok fine. It is the way you designate your coordinate system and where you take the projections here it happens to be that the projections are along the minus j and minus k directions ok and so theta 2 equal to this ok. So, that is sorted out um, h naught you get r 1 cross m a v 1 plus r 2 cross m a v 2 and you end up with 2 d l m theta dot cos theta along the j direction. So, what this tells you is there is a time varying component of the angular momentum, the angular momentum is varying with time ok. So, this means that there is a net torque which has to be compensated by the only other forces acting are it cannot be gravity, but the ground reaction forces have to apply a torque to kind of counter this changing angular momentum. Because when you have a changing angular momentum it means there is a net torque on the body right. In reality what happens is that when you do that if you try to stand and just swing your arms then you notice that your trunk moves slightly to the left and right to count to essentially make this angular momentum 0 ok. All you if you want if you only when the angular momentum is conserved then there is no net torque act acting on the body. So, in this case you will notice that if you are standing in a place and then swinging your arms you will find that you have um, a net uh, your, your trunk has to now slightly move about this y axis your trunk undergoes this rotation to compensate for the angular momentum generated by the swinging arms and it is not it does not move to the same extent because the trunk is much heavier. So, it does not have to ok your arms you can if you swing them vigorously you will find that your trunk moves more, but not as much as the arms. Now, what happens when you walk a similar thing is so by a similar analysis 
this is for the arms I can show that this is similar analysis I can show that the legs while walking will be say 2 D L let us let us call this L A for the arms L legs mass of the legs theta dot cos theta of the leg ok. Let us say these generate. So, now what happens when you are walking? When you walk how do your arms and legs move? They move in opposite ways. So, essentially what, what is happening is this is being counteracted by that the, the momentum angular momentum of the legs and because your legs are generally longer and heavier ok, your arms end up swinging more to maintain the same frequency ok. So, the amplitude of swinging of your arms is higher than that of your legs. Okay, so, this is how when you are walking you basically counteract the angular momentum of the upper limbs and the lower limbs. Okay. So, if, if you are standing and swinging your arms, the GRF ground reaction forces must counteract the yes. It also depends on the theta dot. Yeah, but let us say for a constant theta dot, if you are just moving on the larger you have your deflection as. Okay. Let me think about that. Counteract the very angular momentum in practice. The trunk rotates slightly Okay. So, now let us see the other question is the sin theta components cancel out the sin theta components in the. Uh, so, you are talking about the angular momentum about the j axis and for theta measured in this manner right the sin theta components are basically cancelling out when you do the cross product ok you have a net moment which is only dependent on cos theta ok. So, um, we also say that the frequency has to be the same. So, theta a ok when theta a reaches its maximum theta l should reach its maximum only then you have the possibility of those two cancelling cancelling out ok. So, theta a typically has a larger amplitude than your theta l ok. okay.